एंट्रेंस हिम Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, today the church in India is celebrating the National Youth Sunday. I welcome each one of you to this Holy Eucharist in the name of all the young people of our diocese. Like the World Youth Day and Asian Youth Day, the Church in India celebrates a special day for all the young people across the country. This year, the theme is "Young Men, I Say to You, Arise." During this pandemic, where we, the young people, are facing a lot of problems. like migration unemployment uncertainty of future education and stress the theme chosen for this year gives us a new hope and today's gospel fills the new hope in us jesus is asking each one of us to raise and say do not be afraid a whole world has experienced a time of great darkness sickness and difficulty from the pandemic each one of us have been affected but none of us are alone nothing can separate us from the love of god in christ jesus our lord my dear brothers and sisters as we have just heard it's the youth that we are celebrating today perhaps this question that arises where is god among the youth where is god among us and today's readings give us an inclination that god is not far away god is with us god is with us in our youth god is with us in our childhood god is with us in our families god is with us in this pandemic and therefore trusting in the lord let us offer this eucharist for the youth in our families the youth in our churches and in our society as was the theme to ask the youth to arise and to stand up and to be counted in everything that they do let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries i confess 
to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. To people, to people. 
people of goodwill. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father. Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. A reading from the first book of Kings. In those days, Elijah came to a cave, Horeb, the mount of God, and lodged in it. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said, Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, the earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. 
I will hear what the Lord God speaks. He speaks of peace for His people and is faithful. His salvation is near for those who fear Him. And His glory will dwell in our land. Let us see, O Lord, Your mercy, and grant us Your salvation. Let us see, O Lord, Your mercy, and grant us your salvation. Merciful love and faithfulness have met, justice and peace have kissed. Faithfulness shall spring from the earth, and justice look down from heaven. Let us see, O oh Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. Let us see, O oh Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. Also the Lord will bestow His bounty, and our earth shall heal its increase. Justice will march before Him, and guide His steps on the way. Let us see, O Lord, Your mercy, and grant us your salvation. Let us see, O oh Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 9, verses 1 to 5. Brethren, I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience bears me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ. For the sake of my brothers, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, and the covenants. The giving of the law, the worship, and the promises, to them belong the patriarchs. And from their race, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is God, Overall, blessed forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. After the crowd was satisfied, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are a son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let me first wish our youth, the youth of our Archdiocese, the youth of our country, a very happy day. Youth is a time of joy. Youth is a time of celebration. The youth is a time of parties. The youth is a time, perhaps, to savor the best in life. But surely it may not be the same for everybody. The youth are in crisis also. The crisis, the sorrow, the disappointment is also part of youth today. And the one question that keeps popping up is, where is God? Where is God? Is God with us today? Or perhaps God is far away today? There are many who say that God is very far away. In this pandemic situation, it's difficult to believe that God is there. And yet, And yet the truth is, God is there. God is active in our life. You know, a few days ago, there was this small video, or rather online, program of our Ashdais that was going on. It was called the Family Catechesis. And Father Sunny who organized this, brought those children, called those children who were successful to meet me and take a blessing. So they came with their parents and I met all of them, bubbly lot, very happy. And I asked a small girl, Leah, her name was, 
And I said, Leah, I saw your beautiful clip that you sent us that you are praying. But is God there in your life? And I told her that churches are empty, the churches are closed, the chapels are closed. There is no such thing as pilgrim centers now. There are no other places that we go. But then she stopped me and said, no, Bishop, we have God in our house today. We pray every day today. And, you know, we pray much better than when we were going to the church. And before I go to sleep, Mummy helps me to pray. Mummy teaches me the last prayer before I sleep to say that, God, into your hands I surrender myself or I live myself. I said, if I could only have the faith of this little girl who believes in God, who believes that God is present and active in our life. There's a certain philosophy today, they say, God is there. But then he's not useful to us. He's not useful to us. He's not doing anything to us. And that's why I think for the youths and for every one of us, there's a special word of God today that comes as a consolation, that comes as a special support for all of us. You know, I take these three instances in the Bible or in the readings of today where God is present and God shows his presence to the people. The first one is Isaiah. And this man is very discouraged. Nothing that happens well in his life. He is not received by the people. He is rejected and even perhaps asked to be not to come in public. He is considered as a corona patient today. Don't come close. Stand far away. Talk from there. We don't want to listen to you. And he tries to meet God. Unfortunately, God is also seems to be out of his reach. So therefore he makes a request that I would like to meet you and I would like to talk to you. And God says, I will meet you, go ahead. And he thinks God will come to him because there is a big stormy wind that is coming and he waits quietly in that cave there expecting God to pass by. God is not there. And then there is a strong wind, God is not there. There's the fire, God is not there. And disappointed as he is, after everything is over, there's a school breeze that is passing. And he finds himself consoled that he is in the presence of God. He is in the presence of God. Our God is a God of history. Our God is of time and space. Our God is not the one who gives us the appointment, I shall meet you there. God is there everywhere. If I can only recognize him. Recognize him. You know, there's a story in our Indian tradition books that one guru was such a famous man and he was trying to give the presence of God everywhere. And so there is this disciple of his who ran after him and said that, I also want to meet God. I shall come with you. Where are you sitting? Where I can place myself with you? And the guru asked this disciple, whom are you searching for? He says, I'm searching for God. And the guru smiles and says, God was there down the steps. I just met him. I just met him. You didn't meet him. And this fellow turns and sees was one beggar standing there. But then God is there in a beggar. God is there in a person who is struggling in Corona. God is there in that doctor or nurse who is passing by. God is there perhaps in someone who is disappointing you but pushing you closer to God. The second meeting that we speak of here is in the Gospel when the disciples are really in trouble, they are in a storm. 
And they say it's the third watch. That means somewhere in the midnight, after midnight, they find themselves and nobody would come to help them. But at this time, they find Jesus walking on the waters. Twice it's mentioned that someone walking on the waters. So Jesus comes walking on the waters. Meaning to say, if you are in trouble, God is not far away. You can see his shadow, you can see his personality, perhaps in that trouble and struggle, that things are bad, but things are not impossible. God gives you that strength, God gives you that stamina sometimes to say that I am with you. I am with you. For the disciples at first sight, it's like the ghost that they see. We also, many a times, we are dismissed the presence of God as ghost, as imagination, as hallucination. I don't want to listen. These are all old wives' stories we say. But then perhaps God has passed from your life and you have never noticed it, especially in your trouble, in your struggles. You know, there's another type of walking on the waters which I would like to say is also another small miracle that God does. And who of all the people, Peter, he's impetuous. He does things without thinking. He jumps and says big things, he says. When Jesus says that you will betray me, Peter is loudest to say that everyone may betray you, but I will stand by you. I will not do it. Fellow has already spoken. But even before a few hours, he is the first one who betrays Jesus. And today, once again, you see that when he sees Jesus walking on the water, he says, I will also walk. And Jesus says, come, come, and he starts walking. But when he thinks that he is walking of his own, perhaps he was smiling, that he himself was creating a miracle, he starts sinking. When, he, when a person looks down, he is bound to sink. But when a person looks up to God, he always rises. Today's theme that you have taken is arise, don't sink. Don't go down, but come up. And therefore, Jesus asks him, give me your hand. And when he touches the hand of Jesus, when, he, when Jesus pulls him out, and that's the time he's saved. Perhaps it's a lesson for us. Many a time, our youth also, impetuous as they are, they would like to do so many things in life. There are things that they would like to do that are perhaps not even possible for them. It's good. It's good to dream. It's good to dream because some of your dreams may come true. May come true. Sar is the man who doesn't dream, who doesn't think of the future. But then you need to keep your eyes on God. If you look down and if you think you can do of your own without your companions, without your parents, without your superiors, perhaps you will also start singing. You know, today the church is proposing a model of saint, very surprising, a youth saint, a teenager. His name is Carlo Cusati. He's an Italian born in Milano and he lived most of his life in Assisi, the place of the Saint Francis of Assisi. And what is special about this boy? He was bubbling, joyous, always perhaps singing and making noises. But then his heart was close to God in everything that he did. You know, the Pope wants to keep him as a model of the internet age. Might be surprised. But at the age of 15, that he died in the age, in the year 2006, Internet was just coming in, not as much developed as we have today. But that time he was considered already a wizard as it were, that he was programming and he was making programs as such. And you'll be surprised, one of the programs that he has done, which is still making rounds, is a collage, a, a video on the Eucharistic miracles in the world. The Eucharistic miracles in the world. He was a great devotee of the Eucharist. And he took time, as it were, even from his games, just to make a small visit to the Blessed Sacrament. 
and he's supposed to have said the visiting the eucharist is a ticket to heaven a ticket to heaven and we can say that perhaps he got the first lottery ticket at this age of 15 and on october 10th this year the holy father will be the he will be beatified in assisi the place where he died and for the youth he had a message and he said my dear friends god has made us original and so don't go about like carbon copies or uh, xerox copies most of the youth are xerox copies today and perhaps we the old people also someone puts one shirt i also want to put like him someone puts his hair up there i also want to do it someone sings or dances in that way i also want to stop we are all carbon copies be original do something perhaps that god will recognize you and you will also see that god is smiling at you in these your attempts that are normal but original we all look for ordinary things but saints looks for extraordinary things in our ordinary way of life and that is why they are special they didn't do anything more this boy was playing with the internet perhaps he had also the same temptations that we and the youth have today of the misuse of internet the misuse of computers or mobiles that we are so much glued to but then he did the ordinary thing but in an extraordinary way so that is why the message of today is you can find god wherever you are you can find god in your kitchen you can find god in the toilet you can find god in the fields you can find god in your studies you can find god in your sports and your football of which this boy carlo was so fond of and perhaps he gives us an answer to many of our questions where is god today god is here with me today god is meeting us god comes to meet us god comes to meet us in the cool breeze that is there in your kitchen garden in your breakfast in your tasting of food and everything that you do god is there when you are in trouble when you are in a struggle and you ask god to be part of your life perhaps god will not appro appro up in your life or perhaps appear as a big a big figure god will strengthen your arms god will strengthen your perhaps resolve god will give you a faster breath to solve your problem and that's how god is present and thirdly as we see in peter don't be ashamed of your attempts perhaps you should try some attempts which no one has attempted because the others have attempted and you do it because they have attempted you don't get a credit for it you will be just a carbon copy of what the others have done do something original try something special and always have faith in yourself faith in god you know our muslim brothers have a saying there are two things important in their life one is khuda and second is khud one is khuda almighty and second is khud is myself if you have these two things perhaps we can solve many of our problems with god so my dear youth i wish you well this is the best age of your life youth is just a passing phase you won't be forever youthful soon you'll start getting gray hairs and perhaps all the pains and the joints that you we all are experiencing but you are in the golden age of your life don't let it go pass by and don't let it go pass by without meeting god in yourself meeting god in your companions and in your the people around you and meeting god especially in difficulties in problems because it's easy to meet god or rather to call god when you are victorious when you are happy when you are successful but when you are failed when you acknowledge that you have failed it's difficult to meet god and if it's that time you are you meet god perhaps god will live forever in your life in your joys and sorrows in all the experience of your life i wish you well
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, we are battered with wants and needs. In this struggle, we often fail to keep the faith in the Lord. He alone can be the remedy for all our needs. Therefore, let us put forth our needs and wants before the Lord. Your response, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Catholic Church, Pope Francis, our bishop, priests, deacons, and all who are announced the gospel in some way, that through their lives and ministry they may help us discern the signs of the time and live with hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For our country, for the civil and the political leaders, as well as those in authority, that they may be freed from greed for wealth and all corrupt practices, and that they may work for the welfare and progress of humanity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the young people gathered here, that they may experience new life in Christ, and may understand that the Lord has indeed risen and is alive, that God may give young men and women the gift of understanding to discern their service in the church, whether it be in the priesthood, deaconate, or consecrated life and that God may grant them the gift of courage to follow his call. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the National Youth Day 2020 that we celebrate today, that this occasion of grace may be a fruitful time of encounter with the Lord who calls us, and that we in turn may be a profound testimony for those people who do not yet know him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For all those suffering from the COVID-19 virus, particularly those in our hospitals and in intensive care units, that God may listen to our prayer and bring all our families and our community safely through this dangerous epidemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the marginalized, the oppressed, and the victims of violence, that they may have the courage and the strength to endure all the hardships with faith and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pray for our personal intentions, especially for the needs of our young people, in their families, in their schools and colleges, and especially in their life journey. Lord, you promised us your presence and commanded not to be afraid. Grant us the grace to have unshakable faith in you. Help us to overcome our fear by our faith. Lead us to become the witnesses of our faith in you and walk courageously. We make this prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. Crushing in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soil, now surrender, you are making new ground. In the crushing. 
crushing in the pressing you are making new wine in the soil I now surrender you are breaking new ground so I yield to you and to your careful when I trust you, I don't need to understand Make me your vessel Make me an offering Make me whatever you want me to be I came here with nothing But all you have given me Jesus, bring you wine out of me Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the, the praise and glory of his name, for our, our good and the good of, of all his holy church. church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by His birth He brought renewal in humanity's fallen state, and by His suffering cancelled out our sins, by His rising from the dead, He has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to your Father, He has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with a company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy, these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, 
and giving you thanks at the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he said the blessing, give the chalice to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body and one spirit in Christ. May make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain the inheritance with your elect, especially with our most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, with Francis Xavier, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of the whole world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis R. Pope, Peter Machado Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and all who are pleasing to you, at dear passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress 
as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For, for the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins, sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not, not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say, say the word, and my soul, soul shall be healed. Body of Christ, may the life for us. spiritual communion prayer my Jesus I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally please come spiritually into my heart I embrace you now as if you were already there and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us O Lord and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord Amen The Lord be with you and with your spirit Above your heads and pray for God's blessings we pray for a special blessing on all the youth of our Archdiocese and our country today. May Almighty God bless all our youth in His kindness and pour out 
saving wisdom upon you. Amen. Amen. May he nourish all the youth always with the teachings of faith and make them persevere in holy deeds. Amen. Amen. May he turn the steps of all our youth towards himself and show them the path of charity and peace. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Good morning, dear friends. On behalf of Yuva Chetana, the Youth Commission of the Archdiocese, I thank you all for participating in this Holy Eucharist and praying for our youth. The second Sunday of August every year is celebrated as the National Youth Sunday, declared by the CCBI Youth Commission. And I take this opportunity to thank His Grace most Reverend Archbishop, for celebrating Mass for us and invoking God's blessing on all of us and for the beautiful homily that you preached. Alone, we can do very little, but together we can achieve more. I also would like to thank the Youth Commission secretaries and other collaborators, Father Sampat, he is here with us, and also Father Prakash O.P. and Father Savior Anand and others for and also the youth leaders, the DESCO members and the deanery leaders. And I would like to thank also the choir and all those who made arrangement for this Holy Eucharist, the technicians. I invite now the youth leaders to give a small token of love to our Archbishop for his love and concern for that he has for the youth and the prayers, and not only prayers, is also always concerned about the youth and has many plans for the youth. He, he wants the support of all of you, especially the youth. As Pope Francis says, do not be afraid or do not be ashamed of dreaming big. Come with your great gifts and talents that God has given. So come up with your talents, resources, the young people and all uh, together with the diocese the Youth Commission, we can achieve more. The So my dear friends, I wish the youth a very happy day today. I think you have honored the wrong person. I am an old man, 66 years old. I don't think I looked like 26 that you should have honored me. But I take all this honor and transfer it to our youth director, Father Anil Dissa. He is the new youth director of our Archdiocese and he is a Salesian and you know the Don Bosco, St. Don Bosco is the best model for the youth and I'm sure he has the heart of the St. John Don Bosco with him but at the same time he has the heart of the every youth in his heart, every youth of the Archdiocese. I wish you well Father Anil, Father Santosh, Father Sampat Kumar, one of the secretaries is here with us and I also thank all the youth that are here present today, not in big numbers, but those that represent the whole Archdiocese. God bless you 
and very specially may your days be always sunshine and flowing into the in the horizons as it were of hope and promises next sunday is also the sunday that's important for us we call it the prison ministry sunday unfortunately this year the prison ministry our apostles cannot go around cannot visit the prisons cannot even ask for some contributions but all the same we will be praying for all the prisoners next sunday and also very specially for those of our volunteers who are visiting them who are supporting them who are supporting their families more of it will follow in next sunday but we are announced before ran so that people can start praying and preparing for this sunday we have the independence day this week on the 15th on saturday and being the national day in spite of the pandemic we celebrate this day with our eucharist with our prayers with our flag hoistings and wishing each other and especially our national heroes our soldiers and all those who are working for the country the masses on independence day will be as usual at 6 Seven and eight on our web on our YouTube at six in uh, English, at seven in Canada, and at eight in Tamil on fifteenth. That's the Saturday. <coughs> I suppose you know that due to the pandemic situation, we may not be able to celebrate the feast of Our Lady of Nativity on eighth of September. in st mary's basilica bangalore it's sad for us that is that was the year mark for the year for the whole archdiocese and the whole bangalore not only the christians but even the non christians would gather there to pay homage to the mother but due to the pandemic situation this year we may not be able to celebrate it openly publicly and therefore we are planning what we call the online or youtube based the tv based the media based celebrations not only of the masses but also of our prayers of our hymns for mother mary of the rosaries that we conduct and also the holy hour and the other exercises and so as to perhaps god when he closes the door he opens a window perhaps even a vent ventilator somewhere and therefore this year it may be closed in for the public but it will be open for us privately to pray and to record this private prayers of ours our hymns for mother mary our rosaries and surely all the other exercises on the video perhaps every parish every youth group every children's group can be uh, recorded and we will play it on those days on the nine days of the novena and on the feast day so that the whole archdiocese including our corners up to gogunte up to our pavgada will be represented on the screen as one body of christ that we celebrate together the feast of mother mary and therefore you will find on our web on youtube instructions if you want to record your hymns if you want to record the holy hour the youth rosaries or the other rosaries i am very much impressed by the youth rosary that is being conducted to the direction of father anil every saturday i am praying with you my dear youth and as i see your faces praying so seriously and devotionally i think god is not far away and therefore perhaps you also youth can record certain rosaries certain hymns the the adorations etc and also put it across the tube so those who would like to follow it there are some rules and regulations for recording the timing the group etc kindly go through these as you know the covid season is in progress perhaps more and more people are being affected but we are also learning how to not only die with corona but to live with corona also people are brave enough people are supporting each other helping each other and those that are dying 
we are trying to give them a decent and dignified burial. I have told on last Sundays before this that we have formed a group of COVID burial service which means about 60 people in the diocese have volunteered themselves to bring the bodies, to wrap them, to dig the graves and also perhaps to do the burial service etc. Bravely, they know that there is a lot of risk but God is there. Unless someone moves forward, God doesn't work miracles. And God works miracles with people who are daring, who have courage, who have faith, as we have seen in today's gospel. When you have faith, things are not difficult. And therefore, we have formed a group of people of 15 each in the north, south, east and west with phone numbers that you can contact. If there's any death anywhere, if you contact this group, they will do the all the things that are required, the permissions, the protocols of the government, the wrapping of the body from the morgue till the cemetery, burying, etc. They are doing it for a small fee. If you cannot, we will also support you with all the expenses. And for this, we have created a fund, a COVID burial fund. You will find in the web our details if you would like to help us so that with your money, we can also help the poor people who are finding it very difficult to find places to bury to dig the graves to bury and also do the burial service. Even our own family members are not coming close, but this group has taken charge. And we have told our people to adjust a little. If you cannot bury in your own cemetery, which is full, the city cemeteries are very full, we can take you up to the, a little far away to the periphery parishes where there is little place for burial. We will try to do it as much as possible. Today, our Archbishop Emeritus, Archbishop Bernard Morris, is celebrating his birthday. And we pray for him very specially. As you know, he's back in action. He was in St. John's for about 15 days with a COVID disease. He's cured. He has even finished another 15 days of home quarantine. And he is hale and hearty. We bless and thank God for this small mercies that he has shown to us. And at the same time, we wish Archbishop Bernard Morris a very happy birthday. I wish you, my dear youth, once again, a very happy youth day. Celebrate it in your own families. Celebrate it with sending messages to each other. Celebrate with joy. And if you post a smiling photo of yours, I will also try to have a look at it. Christ. 